I've been asked how the vibrato measurement in Voce Vista Video Pro works and what actually it measures. So I just wanted to make a quick video about uh, how this works and I've also revised this feature a little bit. So what I'm going to show here is about the upcoming version Voce Vista Video Pro 5.7, which hasn't been released yet at the time of this video. But the basics to apply to all previous versions also. So. To understand what vibrato is, let's generate a synthetic file first that has no vibrato. So it just has a sine wave with a constant pitch of 110 Hz, which sounds like this. Uh... So here we have a somewhat regular vibration. If we zoom in all the way, you can see it's perfectly regular. And the period is such that the frequency is 110 Hz. And I can see here in the analysis view where I have enabled pitch analysis that at every point it's perfectly 110.00 Hz. So there's no variation in the pitch at all and that's why it sounds completely artificial. Now let's generate another wave where we do actually have some modulation of the pitch and we're going to apply a sine wave a sine wave of, of 5 Hz with an amplitude of 100 cent. Uh... So now you can see that it wavers a little bit. When I zoom out, I can see that this pitch line is no longer straight, but rather it looks like a sine wave, which is exactly what I told the generator to do. And now you can already see that there are these vertical lines, and that's already done by the vibrato measurement. So. The vibrato measurement now has determined that this periodic oscillation has a frequency of 5 Hz. And here we use vibrato rate as synonymous for the frequency. So if I just click at a position in time, you can see the vibrato rate is perfectly set at 5.0 Hz. Now how does this actually, how does the program calculate this value? To understand this, let's zoom in a little bit and you can see now that I have these two white lines and they delimit the beginning and the end of one whole vibrato period. And this is always measured as the crossing of the blue line with the average line, which is this orange line here. So whenever these two lines intersect, we create a crossing point and every vertical line you see here is one crossing point. And now what the program does, it, it looks at three consecutive crossing points because that always means it's one complete cycle. So first it goes below the mean, then it goes above the mean, and now it's back where it started. And so we have one complete cycle. And for this cycle, I'm, the program looks at the period. So here, for example, we have 8.3 to 8.5 seconds, uh, which means the period is 0 0.2 seconds. That's 200 milliseconds or a fifth of a second. And so if we have one period taking a fifth of a second, that means we get five cycles per second. So if we look at, if we make a selection from eight to nine seconds, we can see that we have one two, three, four, five cycles, which means this has five cycles per second, or we could also say the vibrato rate is five hertz. And then the second measurement we have is the vibrato extent. And that is the distance. If we look again at one single period, the distance from the top peak to the bottom peak divided by half. Or in other words, it's the deviation from the mean. So it says here the vibrato extent is 99 cent, which means this distance is 99 cent and this distance is also 99 cent. If you remember, I said I told the generator to do a uh, extent of 100 cent, um, but we only get 99. And the reason for that is uh, something I might explain later in the video. So this is a completely um, synthetic file which is completely um, 
smooth, like it has a perfect rate of 5.0 hertz and a perfect extent of almost 100 cent. Um, and that is not what you would see in a real recording produced by a human, of course. So let's look at one of the sample files that ship with the program. Um, I'm taking the file A01. And now that's a recording made by an actual human singer. And now you can see that the rate and extent values are still fairly regular, but of course we see a lot more variation now. So when I put the cursor here, I can now click on this button to select the largest continuous range that has cycles. And you can see that there's a set of measurements that is connected and then there's a gap here and then there's the next cycle. The reason for this gap is that the peak to peak value here is fairly large because the uh, human singer changes the, uh, the actual note that they're singing. Actually, let me play this once so you know what it sounds like. And um, we can see here now, once the, like this case is fairly interesting. So first of all, the program determines that there's a whole cycle here. And actually, we ever, every data point is at the middle of three vertical lines. So you can see there's, there's one here. So we always have three consecutive lines. And the data point for this range gets set to the middle line. So you can follow it with the eye more easily. Um, the data point is now always at the line. That is different in previous versions of the software where it was taking the center of the two lines, which is not necessarily the same as the, the middle line, but this is easier for the eye. Um, anyway, so let's look at this cycle. Here you can see the mean goes up slightly, but we still have a pretty clear period. If I actually measure this, we can see my selection is now slightly more than 200 milliseconds, 206 milliseconds here, which means the frequency is slightly less than 5 hertz. And this is the data point here that we see for this cycle, which is slightly below 5 hertz. Now for the extent, again, it takes the distance from this to this. And at this point, it's 78 cent. So if it was 100 cent, it would touch both of these lines or like each line here is 100 cent, one semitone. Now, why don't we get any values here? The reason for that is that the threshold for the positive on the negative peak is Oh, no, actually, so what, what happens, we're looking at the mean pitch difference from here to here. So we have three consecutive crossing points, which is one period, but then the mean pitch has risen a lot. And there's a threshold I can set here, which is the maximum mean step, and that's set to 100 cent, which means when the mean pitch changes more than that, the program won't report a value here. And the reason for that is just that um, it's not clear what is the vibrato and what is actually the rising pitch because the singer is changing their note. And so here we have a region again where the, um, the cycle is stable. The beginning and the end are less than 100 cents apart. So here we start reporting values again because we can be pretty sure that this is a sustained note. And the variations in pitch are actually due to the vibrato and not to the singer changing the actual note that they're singing. And there's also an interesting part here where we can see that the program is reporting the vibrato cycle is very slow because it's not picking up these subtle vibrations here. So I would be suspicious looking at this graph here, what is the vibrato and what's the actual real pitch change. And I would probably start reading out the vibrato after this section. So you always have to inspect the values and make sure 
it makes sense. Anyway, if you put the cursor somewhere and click on this button, it will expand to select every cycle that contributes to this line of measurements. And here, again, because that's not so clear, I would probably exclude this and then we get um, a reading where I can be more sure that this is a real vibrato measurement and not some other stuff. Now we have also several other values here that I haven't talked about. So far I've shown you how it calculates the period, which is the distance between the zero crossings of one complete cycle. And then we have looked at the rate, which is the distance from the top peak to the bottom peak divided by two, or in other words, other words, distance from the mean, from the peak to the mean. And now when we make a selection in time, where we look at several values, we can look at these statistics like average rate, average extent, and jitter and shimmer. And to understand what this means, Let's look at another set of values, for example, this one here. Let's export these values. So I can here select uh, to export the vibrato measurements for the selected range. And then I get an Excel file, which I can open. So I've now um, extracted this graph into a spreadsheet where I basically the same, see the same measurements. And now this is a table of the actual measurements that I have. So first we have the timestamps for each mean crossing or each time where the pitch curve crosses the mean. And now the period is always the distance between these two um, things. So this one is the, dis the difference between 0.4 and 0.2 and so on. So and I can actually create a formula here and I would get the same values. And the rate is just the inverse of the period and um, the amplitude is the distance from the top peak to the bottom peak. Now we have aggregate values here. Um, actually when I open the spreadsheet I have to refresh the formula so that the values are calculated. So the mean period is the average of all these values. And then the standard deviation is um, using this formula. That's a measure of how much this varies. And then the coefficient of variance is simply the standard deviation divided by mean expressed as percent. So here we can say that the period has a coefficient of variance of 4.7% and the amplitude varies a bit more has a larger coefficient of variance at 19.95%. And if we apply this coefficient of variance to the period, we call it jitter. And if we call it, if we apply it to the amplitude, we call it shimmer. So with this export feature, you can actually just click on the export button here, put these tables in a spreadsheet, uh, and then you can verify these numbers yourself to understand what the vibrato measurement does, and in particular, what these values for jitter and shimmer mean. So I hope that I've uh, made it a little bit clearer how the vibrato measurement works in this program, um, in particular, how it uses the mean crossings to measure the cycle period, and then how it uses the top to bottom distance to uh, calculate the extent and how it uses the aggregate features for a selected time range to give you the coefficient of variance for the period, which is jitter, and the coefficient of variance for the extent, which is shimmer.